Hey, welcome to 12 Tone Building Blocks, our monthly series about the fundamentals of music theory. We've already covered scales, keys, and chords, but for the most part, we've only talked about them as separate ideas. In practice, though, they're all deeply related. After all, chords are built out of notes, keys tell us which notes we're allowed to use, and scales tell us how those notes are going to feel, which gives us a pretty good idea of what to expect from chords that include them. Each scale and each key has a specific set of chords that goes along with it. For instance, F major has these, but, well, how do we know that? Finding the right chords for a scale is called harmonizing, and it's actually pretty simple. We pick a starting note, like this F, skip the next note, then include the third one, A, skip the fourth, and then add the fifth, C, on top. Because of the way normal scales are arranged, taking every other note like this will always create some kind of triad, in this case, F major. If we repeat this alternating process for every possible starting note, we wind up with this a fully harmonized major scale, and if we want to get extra fancy, we can add a seventh on top, making this. Of course, no matter where you start your scale, you'll always get the same pattern of chords, and it's often useful to describe them not in terms of their actual roots, but their relationship to the key. For instance, the keys of F major, G major, and C major all have A minor triads in them, but the way the chord feels is different in each one. That's where Roman numeral analysis comes in, and it's as simple as it is game-changing. All you have to do is take the chord symbol and replace the note name with a Roman numeral representing the scale degree it's built on. For instance, in F major, the A minor chord is built on the third note of the scale, so we'd write it as three minor. On the other hand, in C major, it's built on the sixth note, so we'd call it six minor, even though it's the same underlying chord. As a brief aside, this notation definitely isn't universal. There's a couple different schools of thought on how best to approach it. They're all pretty similar, but many people prefer to show minor triads by writing the Roman numerals in lowercase, so our A minor would just be 3. I don't use that system, but you'll definitely encounter it at some point, so you should probably know what it means. Also, for me, the Roman numerals always represent the note's position in the major scale, so if you're using a different scale with different intervals, you show that change by adding a sharper flat in front of the number. So in F minor, A flat major would be the flat 3 chord, because its root is a half step lower than the major scale's third degree. That that, again, is not universal, though. It's just how I was taught. Anyway, back to chords, there's one more thing we need to talk about. Chord functions. Modern music theory is built on the idea that different chords in a key behave differently based on what notes they contain and how those notes interact. This is called functional harmony, and we tend to break chords into three main groups. The first is called tonic function. These are chords that feel like they're at rest. They're often called home chords, and they're incredibly stable. This includes the one chord, as well as the six minor chord, and normally the three minor chord. An easy way to remember remember this is that they're the three triads that contain the third degree of the scale, which is probably the most important note for defining the scale's overall sound. The second group is called dominant function. These are unstable chords that point you back to the tonic, and they're the main engine that drives songs forward. These include the five chord and the seven diminished, which both contain the seventh degree of the scale. This is a half step below the root, and it has such a powerful pull upwards that theorists often call it the leading tone. Dominant function chords also often include the fourth degree of the scale, which combined with the leading tone creates a tritone, a very unstable interval that makes the whole chord want to collapse. The third group is the subdominant function chords, including the four chord and the two minor. These serve as a sort of bridge between the other two functions. They're a bit unstable, containing the fourth degree, which wants to fall back down to the third, but they don't have a leading tone, so they're not nearly as directional as dominant function. These take you away from home, but they don't point you back yet. That's not their job. The idea of chord functions is critical to our modern understanding of harmony, but it does have its problems. For instance, since dominant function is so dependent on the leading tone, it doesn't work in scales that have a lowered seventh degree like natural minor. In fact, a lot of these functions get way more subjective when we stray from the major scale, but still, it's one of the best frameworks out there for explaining most contemporary music, and that's gotta be worth something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Building Blocks was made possible thanks to our patrons on Patreon, so if you want to see more stuff like this, please consider supporting. You can also join our mailing list for scans of all our episodes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking.